So in 2011, 2012, you're part of the group. You leave in 2012. You're now, I believe, 27 years old. When you went into the group nine years ago, 26, 27 years old, nine years ago, you were a teen, 16, 17 years old, 18 years old. What have you noticed that's changed with Antifa from then in 2011 to today? Well, you know something? Antifa today is far more dangerous than anything that I was part of. And I mean, there's this book but written by a leftist activist, um, and it's called The, the Anti-Fascist Handbook. It was written in 2017 or published in 2017. And on the back of the book, there's this gentleman named Murray from Baltimore who um, – He's a self-proclaimed Antifa activist. And it says, the reason you fight them with letters and, and making phone calls is so you don't have to fight them with fists. The reason you fight them with fists is so you don't have to fight them with knives. The reason you fight them with knives is so you don't have to fight them with guns and with guns so you don't have to fight them with tanks. Now, a lot of people see that this is, uh, think that this is a form of anticipatory self-defense that can be boiled down to the phrase of like, don't mess with me and I won't mess with you. But that language is actually trying to say, you better sit down and shut up or we are going to make you by any means necessary. But with this quote, we can actually kind of break down uh, Antifa activism, if you will, into different stages. The first stage is being intimidation and some destruction of property. But then it quickly escalates to force violence and then to deadly force until you get the final stage, which is all out warfare. When Antifa in America, at least in America, has been in different cycles of this. And when I was in the in the 1990s, we definitely saw a lot of that uh, violence. And in the, the late 2000s and kind of when I was part of it, we were kind of in the first stage again, which is kind of intimidation, kind of yelling um, at people. I remember, I mean, I, I broke in a few windows as well as uh, uh, trying to intimidate a few people. But uh, I got to say this. Um, yesterday, I was actually at... Um, at, uh, in Washington, D.C., and I decided to uh, put on the black mask again and kind of infiltrate Antifa. And I saw very key differences between when I was part of the movement. First of all, they're open about- And by the way, when you're saying yesterday, you mean November 3rd election. November 3rd election, yeah. yeah it's yeah. very important because when they see this, November 3rd is the day that everybody's getting to, going through the election. So go ahead, you were saying in D.C.? Sure. So on, on election night, uh, I was actually in D.C. and I decided to put on a black mask and just kind of see what was going on. Uh, I, I, I wasn't really sure what I was going to find, but I knew that for a fact that Antifa was going to be organizing. First of all, it is far bigger than everything, anything I remember seeing. The biggest things that I was a part of was the Occupy protest. And that came from people from all Southern California. And uh, while those were incredibly big, bigger than yesterday, not everybody was part of Antifa. There was a lot of left-wing activists as well as some uh, free market capitalists who were um, angry at the banks. You know, So it wasn't just a left-wing movement, although it, it vastly was, but at the very least, it wasn't all Antifa. Well, yesterday, it was like close to 200 people dressed in the black bloc. And it's kind of funny because they were, at first they were saying like, oh, like no violence, like, you know, don't trash the city. This is, we shouldn't have to do that. Um, but it's interesting because as soon as we started marching within minutes, all of a sudden that went out the window. I mean, they started threatening journalists who were trying to take pictures. And also I believe, I wasn't present at this, but I, I just heard a few, a few minutes ago that um, there was this gentleman who got uh, stabbed or at least slashed in, 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 his, uh, in his stomach. I mean, they, at first they were claiming that it was gonna be some sort of peaceful march, but of course Antifa is not about peaceful protests. It is about shutting things down as uh, using their words. So you dressed up as an Antifa. Did they talk to you, and did they did anybody recognize you, or no one recognized you? No, thankfully not, because I mean, I I, made, I mean, I don't want to be recognized in that rally, but I made sure to keep my um uh, my mask at all times. Um, I actually found some pictures um uh online for some of the news outlets. Uh, but anyways, you, you cannot recognize me. <laughs> but I did talk to a few different people. I think the most notable thing to one of the most notable things to to point out though is that the media. I'm very disappointed in the media. They were basically taking marching orders from Antifa. I remember back in my day when I was part of the Occupy stuff and as well as uh, uh, some of the anti-neo-Nazi uh, rallies that I, that I was a part of. Um, you know, the media was there. Obviously, we didn't want to take pictures of us because, you know, that would reveal our identities. But we would just kind of turn around and just kind of avoid like the photographers. Well, this time, this Antifa was trying to use umbrellas to block cameras and, and not only do that, but actually push some of the, the reporters. On top of that, 
the reason I'm dis- disappointed in the media is because I know for a fact if we had done that back in the day, the media would have just kind of walked away and then tried to take a picture. But this time, a lot of the media was actually listening to them as if they were part of the movement as well. And unfortunately, I think that speaks volumes to a lot of journalists nowadays. What do you mean they, by that? What, what, unpack them when you're saying listening to them as if they're part of the movement. What do you yeah. mean listening to them? Yeah. So, for example, there was this guy who's like, don't take pictures, um, uh, you know, like that, that can only endanger us. And this journalist apologized. Like, I'm sorry, like I didn't think of that. <laughs> you know, it's like, w- well, your point is to just report the facts uh, and just that's... take pictures of what's going on, not try to conceal the identities of these people who are are a part of this movement that are trying to start What organization violence. was that person part of, that that journalist? I, I don't know. I just know that he had a, a press thing here. Um, um, uh, I... I didn't recognize any of the outlets. Every time that I would see it, I would just see the the, the word press on top. I do know that there was this gentleman, um, Elijah Schaefer, who is from Blaze TV. I didn't know that at the time, but uh, I later found out because I saw some of the angles he was taking the pictures of me or whatever. And he was one of the ones who uh, reporters who was being threatened with, uh, you know, he was actually being a good reporter. He was being threatened and he would kind of walk away and try to get a different angle. But there was other reporters who just were taking marching orders from Antifa. Yeah, I saw some of the videos, both in DC and LA, specifically last night with Antifa, and it wasn't looking good uh, uh, in both areas. It seems like, um, you know, they're both, uh, uh, you know, creating more momentum. Obviously, it depends on who gets elected, and a lot's on the line right now. Everybody's trying to mm-hmm. find out what happens next. 